Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kira here from Victory Urbanstead bringing you another video. So I'm here in my front garden bed, which we did major landscaping to last summer. Our goal is to put in a lot of flowers that were friendly to pollinators and such. And the two butterfly bushes on each end have just grown absolutely humongous, but that was intentional because I did not cut them back to the recommended amount. I was just like, let these puppies grow sky high, and I absolutely love it. But anyway, so the front garden bed consists of three rows. The furthest row back is a whole bunch of azalea shrubs, and those, those were there for, I mean, multiple years, way before we got here. And then the middle row is all the plants that we put in, so the butterfly bushes, the two daylilies on each side, and three foxgloves in the middle, the foxgloves were absolutely amazing this year. Last year, they stayed around probably like two to three foot height, but they were super ambitious because this guy over here on the left, he was reaching five feet and pretty much almost my height. So the closest row to the sidewalk has a lot of vacancy left. And I had a friend recently give me some cuttings of her succulent plant called Orpine. So I figured that this would be a great addition to the front garden bed just because it'll kind of, all the other plants bloom either in early spring or spring to midsummer, but this plant blooms from midsummer to fall. So as the seasons go, each row is kind of, you know, overlapping each other in terms of bloom. So I think that's really cool. But anyway, here is the plant itself. And yes, it's in a cooking pot. This is like the first object I could grab and stored it in water for about a week until I had a chance to plant it. But yeah, so it has leaves that are rubbery like most succulents. And the blooms itself are actually like a pinkish to coppery color. But what's really cool about this plant and like most succulents is basically any part of the plant that touches the soil will form roots. So you basically can cut all along this to however much you want and it will grow. And you don't have to like, you know, like I said, it's a stone crop, so you don't have to like make sure it's watered as the roots develop and stuff. It just kind of does it automatically, which is great. But yeah, so Orpine also has a couple other names, but my most favorite name is Witch's Money Bags. And I don't know why it's called that, but I think it's a great name, so that's what I am going to call it from now on. So every time someone's walking up to a front door, I'll say, hey, did you check out my Witch's Money Bags? But anyway, so I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to divide this, but I'll kind of just play it by ear and see how much it'll actually will fill in the space. So let's get started. So I think the verdict is to cut one of them in half and the other two into three to kind of make, I don't know, kind of some sort of a pattern. But also this was at the bottom of the pot. I'm going to stick this in the ground and see what happens with this guy. But this is the taller one, so I think this one's definitely the one I cut into thirds. So we got the top bloom. And then cut in the middle. Probably remove that so it can get stuck into the ground a little bit easier. Cut this bottom. And then cut those off. And I think the next, these ones are pretty even, I think. But one will have to be in three. So I'm just going to go with this one. And then this one will be in half. So 
So here are all my cuttings. All right, so here is the overview of our front bed. And here is the empty space where I plan on planting the witch's money bags. But side note, look how tall that foxglove was. That was just absolutely insane. And of course, that butterfly still has some blooms left on it. There is a bee, just by chance. But yeah, otherwise the rest of the pollinators have sucked the blooms dry. So here is the layout I have chosen for the money bags. And I believe I'm just going to remove the mulch make a little hole and stick the stems in. results of the money bags being planted and if you were curious what I was using to dig the holes it was this pineapple solar light I didn't have any hand tools I couldn't find them at the moment but this ended up working great because the stake was the perfect size um, compared to the stems of the ore pine so here are some of the best looking leaves that I have plucked from the stems and I'm going to see if I can have them grow in this area right here. Now it won't be the final area. Now, th now this won't be the final area that they grow. If they do take, it just kind of will be like a starting ground and then I'll transfer them elsewhere throughout the garden. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this is how I'm used to seeing succulents being propagated and transplanted. It's just a single leaf. So I'm gonna see if witches money bags, AKA or pine can do the same. I had to switch locations because I forgot how deep the mulch was over there because we fresh, we just freshly killed a bunch of grass there and put like probably eight inches of mulch down. But the mulch is pretty deep here too. I know some of you are probably cringing right now. I'm using my pruners like this, but it is what it is. just stick to the six and toss these other two so we'll give that a couple weeks or months and see how that does all right so I think that concludes this video that was a super easy planting and just had to poke one little hole in the ground like I said I'm probably gonna do like a light watering but like I said at the beginning of this video, they need very little care. They'll grow in kind of neglected areas. Not that my front bed is neglected by any means, but just, you know, try to get things started. So thank you guys for watching. I'll do probably an update video on the future just to see how these cuttings grow and prosper. So till next time. Bye guys.